All right, recording is turned on. So Dr. Chuck is gonna brief us on, uh, on three aspects of LTI's current implementation in Sakai. The auto provisioning feature, which is an emerging feature, the uh, assignments LTI feature, and how Sakai and Sugi solve cookies in iframe. So that's the, the, the meat of our, of our conversation this morning. So Dr. Chuck, take it away. Okay, let me have the screen. You gotta stop sharing, Josh. Perfect. Uh, screen desktop two, share. So now it looks just like what Josh was sharing because I'm looking at the technical briefing myself. Um, so are you seeing the technical briefing, Josh? Yes, okay. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, move through these quickly so that you get a, um, I'm, I'm gonna move through these quickly so that you, we have time to ask questions. I will pause briefly for each of the questions. So the first thing that I wanna show you is um, the draft specification that's under consideration in IMS and we're sort of technically not supposed to talk too much about it. Um, we, we can pretend for now that it's a draft Sakai specification because um, Moodle already has shipped this specification and uh, Sakai is the uh, second LMS to be implementing this specification. And for those of you who are also on the IMS uh, LTI working group, uh, you've heard a lot of conversations about this, um, but part of the long-term goal of having an auto provisioning feature was a um, LTI advantage seemed like it was way harder to configure than LTI. Um, there's so many more things that you got to paste back and forth, but the flip side of that is um, because it's using two pairs of keys and only public information is being transmitted between servers, the, informa the information that's going back and forth is not particularly sensitive, right? Because if I'm sending a keyset URL back and forth, keyset URLs generally have no permissions on them. You just, some systems have it under dot well known. And, and so you can do something pretty cool when you realize that this is just stuff you would you could publishly public put on a public blog post here's my here's my key set url here's my launch url here's my all these things because there's no shared secret which is all the thing that really caused lti 1.1 and 2.0 to be scary right was that you had to move these shared secrets back and forth and so that leads to the fact that there's a lot more data that's got to go back and forth but it's mostly public so you don't have to protect it quite so much okay you can, um, and again, I don't wanna go into too much detail of it. I just wanna show you how it works so that you as tool providers um, can start. If, if you're not part of IMS, I, I recommend that you come, um, but also that now it, when I get this merged in, you'll see that this is still in a branch, but when I get this merged in, you will be able to use our little dev one Sakai cloud. And once I really get it merged in, it's already working on dev one because I'm running a branch but I will merge this into the trunk probably sometime next week. And then all our nightly servers and our, and our 21 branch will soon have uh, this feature. And then what happens as the specification moves on, then I got to write JIRAs and fix like when we agree to do something different in the specification. So um, this, this is just the, uh, this is the, the life of people who build the specification first and second. So the Moodle implementation is in three, Moodle 310 and we've made some changes and now they're gonna to have to change in 311. So the people who go in first always sort of take, you can always tell the, the arrow, the, those people by the arrows in their back. So um, let me delete a couple things here. Wipe out a few things. Probably I'll, I'll break somebody's QA by doing this. So here is our external tool. Um, and by the way, I tested this with Cengage and Cengage link is real. So if you are familiar with Sugi, you know that we give you keys and there is a page that you can go look at and find information about your key and um, each tenant, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so in this now, you will actually see this. Sugi in production is now giving you this URL. Now you don't know where to use it anywhere except it works in Moodle and soon will work in Sakai. 
So we'll copy that URL and we will go into Sakai and you see this new link called LTI Advantage Auto Provision. And I'm gonna call it Sakai because it's my Sakai server. And what you'll see is you'll see that it's gonna create a new draft tool. And in that draft tool, we have this pull configuration information in from Sugi. And then I call this URL, I just paste that URL in. I begin configuration. Um, the way it works is, is that Sugi retrieves a bunch of public information from Sakai about what Sakai is exporting in terms of its token. Then Sugi constructs its own registration based on that. And it sends that back and you think, see things like key set URLs in here, names, what message types, all kinds of cool stuff in here. And, um, and then it's Sakai says, I love you. And um, you're a very tasty person. And by the way, here's the client ID I've just given you. And that, that now Tsugi has everything it needs to know to receive things from Sakai. And now what happens is that Sakai is going to grab this, this registration document right here. And, and it's going to now in JavaScript populate from all that the form. And so you see now the URLs populated, um, this all, this whole thing about sending usernames and email addresses that actually came from the registration, allowing the external tool to return grades that came from the registration. The fact that it's a content item came from the registration. These uh, placements uh, came from the registration. And so, and so, that, so a tool can, in effect, set these checkboxes in Sakai. Now, for those of you familiar with Canvas's uh, config.xml, this is like config.xml, but on steroids for LTI 1.3 LTI Advantage. And config.xml from Canvas was a major influence on this, meaning that we're not going to let the spec go out if it doesn't do better, at least what config.xml Canvas does, and then much more. And so um, part of the reason it makes that work is that I've been working with Canvas for a long time now. It's golly, it's almost five years now, where for LTI2 and placements and all that stuff. And Sakai has been very familiar with config.xml and Sugi has been very familiar with config.xml. And literally this UI that you see in Sakai was built based on Canvas's config.xml. At one point I had a Jira, which that would actually read Canvas XML and put it in here. But I don't think we need that now because this auto provisioning is true. By the way, I'm talking way too long. You'll notice that I like clicked twice. <laughs> I haven't clicked anything. <laughs> and all these things that are so hard to copy back and forth, they're already there. Click. And so this is a fully provisioned learning tools interoperability thing. Let's see if I got any sites that aren't full of junk. Oh, okay, now I'll delete that one because that's the old one. And so now I basically have a fully provisioned LTI 1.3 that I'm going to do a deep link and install a Sugi tool and then launch a Sugi tool. Bang. So Chuck, there's a there's a question in the chat oh. from uh, from Mike Brousseau. He's uh, he's noting that the key didn't come over. And he's wondering whether it's still needed. What key? Do you mean, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, let me get chat up. The key didn't come over. Um, okay, Mike, then I have to do another demo because the key is an LTI 1.1 concept. What I just showed you is a pure LTI 1.3 tool. Mike, feel free to unmute uh, so we can talk for a second about this. Yeah. So it's not exactly superseding it. And Sakai is unique in this, but Moodle saw this demo yesterday and they're scrambling to do the same thing Sakai is doing because Sakai has some real advantages because we're not a multi-tenant operating system. And so you can actually, and I won't do it. I don't know who this really is. That's one LTI 1.3. Um, uh, so one thing that you noticed is that when I did it, I ended up in an edit dialog. 
And so the way there's a thing and it's, and I think I'm gonna have to move it to a whole new meeting to go through the LTI 1.1 to 1.3 transition document. Sakai does this literally better than anybody else on the planet, but I am shaming the other L. Canvas, I think does it right too, um, because Canvas, Canvas's user IDs before multi-tenancy were uh, primary keys going from one and going up. But in a multi-tenant environment, uh, the University of Michigan can have a primary key of two and a UCLA can have a primary key of two in a multi-tenant environment. So Canvas has to change the user ID concept as they go from single tenant to multi-tenant. And I don't know where they're at on that. Um, in this LTI 1.1, and if you look at the agenda, I've got on a topic, right? But I'll just briefly say, you can go make a full Sakai LTI 1.1 with a key, with a secret, with a launch URL, and then later you can actually come in and add it to that. So if I go over here, what you are seeing is this looks like an LTI 1.1 and it is a completely legit LTI 1.1. And then I can add LTI 1.3. So both on the Sakai and the Tsugi side, the LTI 1.1 and 1.3 are bound together. You could almost think of it as um, LTI 1.3, LTI 1.3 is like a, a few more data columns in LTI 1.1. And, and it's a long story to explain how that came to be, but that's kind of why LTI Advantage was approved two years ago, but we're just finally figuring out how to use it now. Um, and it has to do with client IDs and multi-tenant and single tenant. And some of those things that we just weren't gonna figure out until a, a series of single tenant architectures like Sakai and Moodle deployed it. And then multi-tenant architectures like Canvas Desire to Learn and Blackboard deployed it. And then we started just started seeing patterns between all that. And we worked together with Turnitin and Martin and we figured that all out. But when it's all said and done, then LTI Advantage becomes a much simpler concept. And, and I've built all this complexity. I built it the complex way in Sugi and I am tempted to delete some of my complexity. Um, so, um, okay, enough of that. Uh, so, couple of a couple of other questions in chat. So related to the complexity in Sugi, uh, Trisha Gordon asked, why does Sugi present the underlying code briefly before getting to the actual Sugi app in lessons? Uh, Trish, that's because um, I've got the debugging turned on, if that's what you're asking for. Why do I have all those extra clicks? You can turn those extra clicks on yourself and see them in your own Sakai by saying always launch in debug mode. And I've got this, yeah, <laughs> I'm a developer. I, I turn debug mode on all the time because I'm terrified that things aren't going to work, right? So so, so back to, to, to Mike, uh, I think, so, so Paul, um, you guys are members. And so I just come to the, it's, now, let me check. Shh, don't tell anybody I'm showing you this. It's called LTI dynamic registration. Don't tell anybody I told you that. Okay. Uh, so, Yun, uh, LTI auto configuration in which Sakai version? So, I believe that, you know, and I'm not, I don't get to make all these decisions because it depends on QA and me building a good test and that test working and then people signing off on my stuff and People don't trust me. I'm a cowboy. And so people from long site like triple check me and that's good. But I am pretty confident that it'll be in Sakai 21.1. And so I have done all the work. Um, I have done all the work to move it into Sakai 21.1 by figuring out the data model changes and 21.0 will have the data model changes in. So I can drop this in as a dot release in 21.1. And so that will likely be shortly, you know, probably like the Marchish, Aprilish timeframe is when 21.1 will come out. Um, and I'll have it on the Dr. Chuck tester for you all, like from now on. I mean, right now this is running my branch rather than master. And as soon as I merge it into master, I'll switch dev one sakaicloud.com. And so everybody can test both their LTI one point, uh, both their auto provisioning and their LTI 1.1 migration, but you got to stay in touch with me because as the spec changes and there's already things that the work that Moodle and I have done has made the spec change, which means I'm gonna have to change it. So if you just, I'll keep this server up to date. Um, and so, yeah, you know, let's see, I think I got it all. 
right, we're going to need another meeting. Crap, it's 20 minutes. I thought that was going to be three minutes. That was the easy, that was the short one. Okay. So we can, we can have another meeting and talk about this, especially if you kind of internalize it a bit and think about it. What, I, what we really want to do, as Josh said, is we, because we're open source and I can show you both sides of it with Sugi and Sakai, I can show you all the code that did it. Like for example, I mean, don't, don't laugh. I can show you the source code to the Sugi part and I can show you the source code. And as a matter of fact, like I just got a request from Blackboard to show all of, to send all my code to him uh, for the LTI 1.1 transition because they're going to implement it too. And so, I mean, because we're open source, I can do that. And we see this as like, I can, we can teach you in ways that Blackboard and Canvas can't because you can run it and watch the logs. You can put debug statements on both sides. <coughs> so we, we want to function as a test harness for everybody for all this. And I will put servers up for the very purpose of making a test harness. Um, let me show you the source code of the Sugi end of this. Uh, it's in Sugi, not Sugi PHP. It's in, 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 in the settings. It's in, in, in a key. It's in autocommon.php. And so here we have the source code to the PHP side of this. And some of you from the Sugi world know that you, they, you just don't use Sugi, you just steal my code because it's free and open source and then you use it, but you can always test with Sugi. And so this is, that's the code that makes the tool side work. Now there's other things having to do with data model and I'm happy to dive into that, that Sugi does so that it creates the equivalences with the migration, but this is just the auto provision. Okay. Okay. Pop, I've got the chat going so you can, uh, you can hop in. So that checks off the brief, uh, review of the auto provisioning feature. Um, and I'm willing to talk about that in a future meeting as well. Again, we want to help you implement auto provisioning and you'll be implementing it for everybody, not just us um, and implement it well. And so that's where I have expertise and I'm happy to share code and expertise. Okay, so now let's do the assignments tool. Those of you familiar with from those of you who are familiar with Canvas, um, I have been, you know, I've been working with Canvas closely for a couple of years to really align our, you know, approach. And so we got like this shopping cart icon, right? And that works just like Canvas. And now this is the last of the things that Canvas really the main cool things that Canvas does that Sakai did not do. Um, catching up. Finally, so yada. So what we have, this is Sakai 21 only, which is coming out shortly after the first of the year. Um, uh, and so what we have, it's a real simple thing. We have a dropdown. Yeah, I stole the exact text that Canvas has in their dropdown. And once you have an assignment, you can go select an external tool and I'll just go select this external tool. And uh, sorry, Trish, that's because debugging's turned on. <laughs> um, let's just put the trophy tool in. And, um, and so one of the things about the content item in deep linking, this happens to be using deep linking, um, is that tools can do things like say the maximum score, oops, say the maximum score, set dates of availability. And this is the tool now, right? And, um, and this is a part of the protocol called line item. And, and, and I'm, in Sakai, I have a way to tell you whether or not you are being selected where this is useful. You can send it to Sakai, like if you're in the middle of a rich text editor, but it doesn't understand due dates in a rich text editor. So Sakai actually has a little extension to say, don't bother with this, you know, if you're sending it back to me, but this is something all tools can do. Turnitin does it, uh, um, 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 grade scope does it. I mean, a lot of the Sakai work was tested with uh, uh, Karen and Martin, it's grade scope. And then I added all the stuff to, so this was actually working first with grade scope and Turnitin. So, and so this is now passed back. Sorry, Trish, debug output. 
And, um, and so now it's actually pasting in and it's fiddling around inside of Sakai and setting due dates so that the tool actually now set the due dates. And in Sakai, the only good place we have to have this workflow around due dates and stuff like that is the assignments tool, right? So I picked it and then, and what the heck, let's try loading a new tab. And then I'm gonna create an assignment, okay? And so now we have an assignment and away we go, right? Um, let's see if it launches. It'd be so exciting if it didn't launch, if it launched. Oh yeah, see, there we go. Something didn't work. I don't know why. So I'll, uh, I'll figure that out. I don't know why. I'm on my dev server. But uh, so, but you get the idea. That's the new assignment thing. And that 403 was a bug that I thought we'd fixed a long time ago. So, um, but that's the workflow for assignments. Um, and I'll go test that after the meeting. Does anybody question, have any uh, questions about the assignments? A lot of people who have done assignments use the, use our shopping cart to go put deep links into the shopping cart. And then they, the students would actually launch from here, but then there was sort of no workflow around it. Oh, I know exactly what I did. Hang on a sec. Here's a to-do list I have. See what it says, test assignments. It's not crossed off. This is running a branch. So let me explain what that bug was. Um, so if I go over the assignment, so here's the interesting question. If this assignment is not available, you don't want students to figure out that they can click on that link or pass the link. So this ends up being a LTI link launch here. Okay, so this is a LTI link launch. And this is a URL, and if you copy the link, this is a URL that students could pass amongst themselves. And if they pass that amongst themselves, that's security by obscurity. So what I did was I made it so that when you press this link, when you press this link, it actually authorizes you to launch that, this particular student to launch that particular URL for about 30 seconds. And so I got a 403, but I recoded, I, I changed in this code, I, I changed how I check the 30 second part. And, uh, and so I think I'm getting expired tokens. And, but, and so that was, that's why it's not merged yet because I was supposed to test that. I'm sure that if I did this on nightly that it would not be such a problem. So. So that's assignments. Any questions? It's really nice to see Dr. Chuck, see this stuff, you know, see this, this, this piece of functionality and make it into assignments like this. Yeah. yeah. It, Andrea won't be really happy to see that 403 sneaking back in, but we'll <laughs> fix that before she sees it. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go on to the, we're doing okay. That only took me 10 minutes. Hey, Chuck, before you go on, there's a yeah. question in the chat from Ron McGetrick. Ron, do you want to unmute and, and explain? Yeah, so there's a reason I wanted to join this conversation. This is very good. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, here at ISU, Illinois State University, we are exploding on LTIs. Currently, we have 10. We're possibly adding another 10. Yep. So we store LTIs in two fashions. Mainly, our university wants to be the kind of gatekeepers of LTIs. So we do not allow our instructors to add LTIs locally like you're showing us in this presentation. All our LTIs are added globally in the in admin workspace and external tools. And then uh, uh, we design it or maybe we manage our LTIs so that the, uh, the admins for the university are the only ones that are able to add the you know, LTI. So my only quick question is, love what you're doing. I think that's awesome to add it to assignments. Uh, but what the sequence I just followed, you did it when the LTI was uh, configured in the actual local course. Can, uh, will this also work if, if you're referencing an LTI that's stored globally through the admin workspace? 
It's a great question, but you missed it. Okay, and if I did, that's great because uh, <laughs> so you're, you're the exactly expert. You want. I, yes, yes. So you'll notice I'm in administration workspace. I did this in administration workspace. The drop down, the, the drop down in assignments, right? This drop down in assignments, come back assignments, this drop down in assignments, that is, that is not, in this particular moment, there are no local tools. Those are only global tools. And so it's exactly the way you want. Okay, but awesome. Yeah, that's what we wanted because we've had professors kind of go rogue and, yeah. and go out and add an LTI locally because you guys have designed it where someone can actually add an LTI locally to a course and that's what we're trying to prevent. Here's the danger. The danger is that this was, this was built initially by a rogue professor because I am a rogue professor. And it's frustrating when I end up in a place and, I keep, and someone turns that off. I'm like, what? I'm a rogue professor, but I, I get it. So at least we have a no, rogue thank professor you. feature. I'm just like, give me the admin, please. i tell you a story sometime about, uh, a quick story about the University of Michigan when, back when we were running Sakai. Um, I wanted uh, uh, them to just log in as admin and change a, just one checkbox. Just check on admin, Ch change one checkbox. And they're like, oh, we've done through our QA and it's the second week of class and we don't do any of that after the second week of class. And I'm like, God damn it. And so what I did is I immediately created a uh, change to default that checkbox to be true. And I put it in as the code. And, um, and then the next semester, I didn't have to ask him for that, for that uh, favor. So that's, that's called rogue professor. And you can commit to the source code and change the default because your local admins don't, you know, so. Chuck, thank you very much. This is exactly what we're, we're needing because like I said, LTIs are here at Illinois State University is exploding. It's, it's so let awesome. me show you something cool though. And this is a 21 only feature. And if you watch this, 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 this thing right here, these two menus were nasty in, in 19 and 20.2 up to 23, 20.3 and, oops, come back, quit doing that. This, these are, the, if you looked at this, this has been really improved. Watch. Oh, I don't want them to use that, this particular Sakai tool. I don't want them to use it in lessons and I don't want it to be an assignments type. I only want it to be usable from the rich text editor. Save. Let's go into an assignment and let's make a new assignment. Add. And let's select an external tool. Whoa, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? So you actually can turn those things on and off. And if I go into lessons, I believe that I turned it off in lessons as well ain't there, right? But because what I did is I put it in as, um, uh, let's add some text. I still let it be used from the rich text editor. So you have uh, in Sakai 21, you have extreme, this is a concept called placements. And so in Sakai 21, the placements are just right. They're just, they're just the way you would expect. You have the kind of control that you want to have. Um, in 19, it wasn't as clean as it is now. And, and part of what's happening with that auto provisioning that I showed you earlier is all these checkboxes can be set by the tool, but the administrator can override them. So my tool is going to like say, yeah, hit me with your best shot, put me everywhere, but then you can change this. And that's part of this auto provisioning. It's not really a contract. It's in effect, a, it's a, cutting and pasting of a ton of stuff that you don't have to cut and paste. And then you still have as administrator, absolute control. And that's part of the reason that uh, you're concerned about vendors that rely on the ad external tool feature. Yeah, Alan, you, you can turn that off, but you, you piss people like me off, right? Um, and so, but that's okay. You just, Alan, I mean, you just have to, you have to be nice and put them in. You just tell them they can't do it, right? And, and, you're, and what you're talking about, Alan, of course, is not, not what I just showed. It's the, um, it's really like this, it's this button right here, the manage install tools. No, 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 don't make Dr. Chuck man. Alan, I don't teach at your university and I know that you will check my check boxes. Um, 
but yeah, so I believe there's a way to turn this off. I, <laughs> I don't know how to do it. I didn't write it, but I'm sure someone else who, who is more close to someone like you, but getting rid of this and also it's also available that that same thing is also available here. And then this is allowing the instructor to do various things, but I think that that's suppressible. If it's not suppressible, it should be. And so, um, yeah, okay, okay, good. So that it, the way things work, Alan, is I add features and then people like Longsight listen to you and then they make disable features. <laughs> then they make checkboxes disable my features basically. And and then I just like, oh wow, I just, I build, I build a nice gateway out of where I wanna go and I've been put back in, but luckily I can talk to the admin and they'll check my checkbox for me because you know, admins are much nicer now. So, okay. Okay, Tiffany, I'll write that one down. Um, I'll, 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 I'll try to get that in 21.1. Yep, yeah, I know, I know, I know. That's another placement, Tiff, Tiffany, that is another placement. And that's actually a placement um, that some LMSs have control over that I don't, but I can. Um, that's called a course navigation placement. And I will, when I'm done with it, Tiffany, you will have another checkbox. You will have another checkbox right here. That is allow tool to be placed in left navigation. And when you uncheck that, whoosh, yeah, okay, course now. Yeah, so some things that happen, like, you know, what Jennifer's saying, some things that happen is, you know, you hide them and you make it so the teacher can't do it. But then someone writes a web service like at Longsite to auto provision certain, you know, 42 sites that have it or something. And, and, and this just stops, stops the UI from uh, putting those links in. So I'll, I'll add a course nav. It's a good thing. I don't know if I'll make 21.1 with it. Uh, because I'm also fixing common cartridge because I just imported a cartridge and it didn't work to my satisfaction. So I, I wanna make that prettier. So, um, but we're in good shape. This code this code that I have for 21, my code for 21.0 is rock solid. My back port to 20 is, is rock solid. And my code for 21.1 is rock solid. So I'm in, I'm in pretty good shape at this point to clean up a few of these other things. Um, yeah, okay, so let's, continue to my briefing, the thing that a lot of folks, so the last thing I want to talk about is solving cookies in iframes, okay? And this is for all of the vendors, the tool vendors, right? Um, so let me, let me get it set up. It's a little hard on these smaller screens. Now we're going to have some fun. The network. So it's, it's all fun and games until we open up the debugger, the developer console. Okay. So this is, this is where, uh, the thing about the debugging is going to be helpful. Okay, I'm going to click on this and a bunch of things are going to happen and then it's going to come back. Hopefully I won't talk so long that the timer runs out. So uh, let's see, there's a lot of things that happen here. That don't matter, that don't matter. That don't matter, where am I, where am I finding? Okay, I'll search. Oh, maybe I haven't sent it yet. Maybe I haven't sent it yet. Let's try this. Oh, come back, come back. I don't know what happened here. Ah, okay, yep, I hadn't sent it yet. Okay, so for those of you who are not familiar with OpenID, OpenID Connect, uh, the tool vendors know this pretty well if you've done LTI 1.3. Um, 
one of the things that happens is there are two round trips, right? So if, if I have Sakat, oh, not that, I meant to draw on it. Draw, there we go, draw. So come back. If we have like a Sakai, Sakai, and we have a tool, an LTI tool. This is only LTI 1.3. In the old days, we had this thing that was a launch and that launch, we signed it inside Sakai and they checked a signature and then off they go. And different, if you had a multi, if you had multiple tools, they would all have this different target link URI. That's not how it works in LTI Advantage. In LTI Advantage, the first thing that it does is it talks to a well-known OIDC launch endpoint. And Sugi does a bunch of stuff, checks if it's cool, kind of, and then Sugi is supposed to set a cookie in this browser and um, kind of come up with a random number to mark the browser. And it has to do with solving a security problem of some kind of man in the middle, middling us, right? So the idea is that Sugi is supposed to set a cookie in the browser and then there's other data that comes back. There's this state value, which I'll show you in a second. And then the, Sakai has to then bounce it back. And that's why this would have been one launch, but then it keeps coming back to Sakai. And then Sakai has to bounce it back to what's called the OIDC redirect URL. And then Sugi does some stuff, importantly, checking that cookie. And then Sugi then redirects to itself to the ultimate launch URL. And like the document annotator is really here. And so there's really sort of what used to be one step where in LTI one, we would just go straight to the endpoint of the annotator and sign it. Um, there is a three step process, or two, three steps. So it goes to Sugi, Sugi comes back to Sakai. In a blink, you don't even notice it, it goes back. And the part we're talking about right now is the problem of the cookie, right? And the problem of the cookie. Um, and so clear, clear all drawings. Okay, so the problem is the cookie. But the, here is the problem. The problem with cookies is that we are living in an iframe. And um, cookies have become persona non grata in iframes. And that's because all these little tracker systems talk to themselves from one thing to another to another. So if you put like a, a Facebook badge on your page, then Facebook is tracking and it sets a cookie and then it checks its cookie and then it sees as you move from you know, one you know, Pinterest to uh, Rakuten to whatever, Facebook is tracking you all the way and Rakuten's not doing it, but Facebook is doing it. And so there's these things that the browsers are tired of these iframes that are in, in tracking world, these are not visible, but in Sakai world and LTI world, they are visible. And, but the problem is, is that uh, the browser vendors have effectively shot across the bow of people, of tools that live in iframes and said, your cookie setting days are numbered. And there's like some preference you can go in and I probably could find it in my browser somewhere, but here's the thing. The preference basically says, allow scummy cookies from scummy evil trackers who are stealing all your data. Check yes or no. And some schools are trying to get their people to check the yes button, but, it, but the browser people have worded it so heinously that no one wants to check the button. And the problem is, is LTI Advantage, this is a requirement in LTI Advantage, but it doesn't work. And so there are, and so I'll just preface what I'm about to show you is there are people who are way smarter than me that are coming up with way more clever ways to do this, but we've been talking about it for six months and there's a bunch of them. And I think one's gonna work out. And if you are a tool vendor, get to the LTI working group to talk about it. I'm not talking so much about what they're working on. I'm talking about my workaround. And so the problem is that you need to do something to use LTI 1.3 
right now. Now, one of the things that's not so uh, critical is um, if I go back to the picture again, draw it a little prettier. So you got the you got the OIDC launch, you got the cookie, then you got the bounce to the redirect URL, then you got the bounce to the actual tool. So the tool, the launch, the redirect, and then the cookie, right? Um, so <clears throat> the, the, the cookie really is something that you're doing from here to here. I mean, you're, you're comparing this cookie to make sure that this request is coming from the same browser that this request is coming from. And so you're marking it, right? Now, here's the thing. If you, in the old days with LTN 1.1, if you got a launch straight to a tool, many of you cleverly don't use cookies at all. And so if you're like got a React app or a single page app, you're, you don't use cookies. You just use like session storage or whatever. And so you just got to get whatever session created long enough to get your single page app, SPA, right, working. And so you can avoid the cookie problem inside of an iframe. And that's actually what Sugi does because Sugi doesn't use cookies. And so all forever, whether it was an LTI 1.1 or an LTI 1.3, um, Sugi has been fine inside every LMS because once the tool is running, Sugi has no need for cookies. And if you have a React app or an Angular app, you have no need for cookies also, which means you can build beautiful little user interactions inside of iframes. <clears throat> but because of this three-step OIDC flow, you now have as a requirement for security to have this cookie. So it's not even be before the user sees anything. And even if you have worked around cookies at this point, right? In the third step, you can work, you've worked around cookies, fine. You can't work around cookies here, right? And again, the spec says you have to do it. Okay, any questions on the setup of, of my little thing? Okay, so look, what you need to do is your goal as a tool is to verify that you are talking to the same browser in the OIDC launch as the ultimate OIDC redirect. And so I don't use cookies. So I use browser signatures and you can all curse me at that point. And everyone, as soon as I say it in the LTI working group, they're like, Oh, browser signatures, woo. Well, here's the problem. Unless you use browser signatures, you are going to be doing a bunch of pop-up screens and a bunch of little things or iframes inside iframes. The solutions that do not include browser signature are miserable because this is not part of user interaction. This is like a web service to get things set up. And so you are creating a nasty interaction just for the OIDC stuff to work. So you can compromise. And I will tell you that this time next year, we will probably have a clean way to do this. Problem is LTI Advantage is here and it's here now. So this is my recommendation. You could literally not do it, not do anything. You could not set a cookie and you could not check the cookie. It is up to you as a tool to decide you're going to do that. Uh, future topics in progress. Oh, I see, there's a poll. Ah, the poll is, Okay, ah, there's a poll. It moved, I gotta select, okay. Let me get that, oh, no, no, I got mouse, 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 mouse. This is when you're watching, you're watching a Zoom thing and someone is like furiously trying to get Zoom out of the way of my shared screen. Now I did. Okay, so you're supposed to set a cookie. You're supposed to, you're supposed to set a cookie. You're supposed to check a cookie. You're supposed to make sure. I don't because I want my crap to work and I am willing to accept the fact that I'm going to use browser signatures. And what I would like to do is I would like all of us to talk about browser signatures and to experiment with browser signatures and figure out the best way to do them and come up with the best practice. It is my belief that using browser signatures is a one-year solution but it lets us work with LTI Advantage without stupid pop-ups. I hate those, without stupid pop-ups for a year. 
and it's a compromise. But literally, there's we're checking secrets here, we're checking secrets here, there's all this stuff. So I don't think it's that bad of a compromise. And you don't have to do what I'm saying. I am just showing you how I have survived. And so if I look at um, if I look at this, well, it's hard to, it's really hard to see. I have code that sets a browser signature when this is coming back and it stores it inside at Sugi. And then when it comes bouncing back to me, wherever that is, somewhere. Well, what, I don't, it doesn't matter. So there's no cookies. Okay. Now, if you go back to the agenda, you see, you can see my Sugi browser signature code. Again, welcome to open source. And so I will tell you that I run a number of extremely large, extremely complex Sugi servers in high level of production. And so if I break this code, it breaks terribly and I have broken it. Uh, and I have be, I'm living behind proxies. And so what I'm saying is I've got a set of, a set of headers that I have, and, uh, that I have found um, that is a good set of signatures, right? And, um, and so what I would love is to start a conversation about the best way to do this for those of us who actually wanna solve this for the next year. And then when the LTI working group comes up with the good solution, the pure beautiful solution, um, then we can switch to that, right? And so this to me is an interim thing. And so all it's doing is I have derived through great pain, a set of things that don't change. Like I use Cloudflare and they do such dynamic routing, the IP address can change, it's really crazy. So, and I'm getting errors because I get thousands of requests an hour and I would get little errors and people would complain to me. So when you got thousands of people using your stuff and they know who you are, then IP address didn't work. And so I think we should sort of work together. And I would also like people smarter than me to look at this. So let me tell you one of my ideas here. You'll see that I just do the, this array, right? But you know what, that this then could be faked. And that's the problem with browser signatures is that if I'm man in the middle and I can, uh, you know, get a hold of these things, you know, I can, I can fake them. And so, you know, I, I would like someone to look at this and say, you know, we could uh, do this other thing or make it a little better or do this or do that. Now there's also a state thing that goes back and forth that you, they have, but the man in the middle can get a hold of that as well. So, that's what I do about cookies. I'm not particularly um, proud of it, um, but I am proud of the fact that for the next year, my stuff will work without stupid pop-ups. And then when there is an excellent way to solve it from the OTI working group, then I am ready to do that. And so I'm going to uh, stop talking. Yeah. Okay, so I see Tiffany. Yeah, Tiffany, the whole idea of making it as seamless as possible. Um, absolutely. Like one of the things that that we don't, that's on my, if you look at my, uh, the JIRAs that I'm working on, oops, got the, the crisis, the crisis JIRAs that I'm working on, the next range of JIRAs, and you see that I'm working on a JIRA to make icons look better. And so I, I work on crises first, and then, I, so these are, these are sort of prettier things. So once, once I get the core stuff working, I, I move right on to making it uh, a lot better. Um, so the migration, uh, LTI link import, um, I, that's great. Um, those, those two are the things I'm, I'm, I'm totally ready to talk about LTI migration right now. We're out of time.
but the next meeting could be quick, meaning an LTI link import. I'm actually fixing that right now. And so that probably will be a 21.1 thing um, with a backport to 20, uh, maybe 23, 20.3. Um, I just happened to use it for the first time in a while and I'm like, eh, that could go better. And so I'm gonna, so if it were two weeks from now, I believe I could have a really good meeting talking about both the migration and the common cartridge link improvement. So I'm gonna turn it back to Josh, um, stop sharing my screen and, uh, and let, Josh, uh, let Josh have the last five minutes. All right, sounds great. Thank you for that briefing. So I'm turning off the recording because we had said in the agenda that we are not recording the wrap-ups. Recording is being turned off now.